Hey, everybody. Welcome into the studio for another YBM cast with Matt and Brian. We appreciate you being with us. We've got a good show for you today. Tim Canavan is going to be on the show. Uh, Lindenwood assistant coach uh, talking some recruiting, some, uh, you know, just baseball, just general baseball knowledge. Yeah. Tim's a very smart guy. Um, he's had a lot of success everywhere he's been and uh, he really knows what he's talking about. Happy to have him. He's a good guy. I've known him for a long time. Absolutely. So we want to first start off, we're going to give you a little uh, preview here. Uh, Matt and I have been uh, talking about uh, youth baseball for some time now. Uh, we talked uh, uh, on the show last time about rankings and things like that and talking about players. And we're going to be getting into player rankings, talking about prep baseball, perfect game, local kids, where they're at. We're going to be discussing that as we move forward. But we're also looking at the 13 and 14U age groups. Yeah, we'll get into team rankings, 13U, 14U, um, maybe a couple kids to watch for the future. Don't really want to get too deep into individual kid stuff at 13, 14, but those ones that stand out, they could probably commit early at mm -hmm. a 15U age maybe. Um, we'll start getting into some of them because they're probably already getting recruited once they get to 8th, ninth grade. Believe it or not, but um, but yeah, we'll get into team rankings. Thirteen, fourteen, you uh, at the state level, uh, nothing below thirteen, you and I guess I guess people probably want to know the process of how do you come up with rankings at thirteen, you fourteen, you right? Um, and the best way that we feel to get rankings at thirteen, fourteen, you is eye test, word of mouth. Uh, director, tournament directors, site directors, uh, club coaches and owners that know the baseball, that can give honest opinion on those age groups, strength of schedule, where are you playing, how difficult of a schedule are you playing, or is it in the national schedule, um, and how are you doing in those events? Yeah, because And not, then how are they doing against each other? Right, right. Straight up head-to-head -head competition. Yes. Yeah. You know, because you do have teams that travel – to play on the on the regional or national level, like you said, because there's three state, regional, and national. So, and I think we're going to be. Uh, I think it's going to be fun. Yeah, I'm looking forward to yeah, it. Yeah, some happy people, some upset <laughs> people, but hey, it is what it is, right? But I think that's where you can, you know, let's uh, let's get an honest opinion, uh, an honest. I shouldn't say opinion because, you know, well, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll, we'll, we'll do, uh, we'll do the math the best we can and that we'll put it that way. So, and, and like you said, there's always an eye test to these things. Well, then you want teams to play at the level they belong at, which is nothing against the lower level teams. That's just where they are at this time. Right. Most of them, by the time they're 15, 16, you it, 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 they don't even remember 13, you baseball for, unless it's just the friends that they made, which is important. Um, but by the time you get to high school, I mean, there is no double A, triple A. It's just flat out. You're just playing ball. But at the younger ages, the 13, 14 U, it's, you don't want a triple A major team sandbagging and double A because that doesn't do anybody any good. <laughs> so, you know, hopefully it gives people initiative. Hey, let's play a tough schedule. Let's play good teams. Let's have some fun and, um, and not sandbag and beat up on teams that aren't nearly as good as us just for a trophy. There you go. So, Hey, all right, guys. Uh, that's what's coming up here. Um, we're going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back with Tim Kinnaman. All right, everybody, welcome back. We've got uh, Tim Canavan, who is – an assistant baseball coach at Lindenwood University. Uh, Tim, appreciate you joining us on the show today. Uh, appreciate you taking the time. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here. See, my wife has always told me that nobody cares what I have to say. Now I have proof that there's at least two people who do. <laughs> well, from, we're glad we could help you out. <laughs> yeah. So we're going to talk uh, a little baseball here. Um, and uh, talk a little recruiting uh, upcoming season. We we know there's still some hurdles and some challenges to overcome here. So, you know, but, hey, nonetheless, we're going to talk a little baseball. Yeah, Tim, uh, a couple things. One, 
Tim, for those that don't know, Tim is a high school baseball state champion oh, at MICDS. Yeah. Uh, and then after MICDS, he went on to Lindenwood. But I'll let Tim go ahead and give us a little history about yourself. I actually started coaching uh, at the junior college level in 2002 at the old Florissant Valley program with Coach Hillerman. And I was there for about five years. Um, and it was really kind of an extended apprenticeship because in no way did I deserve that position. But Coach Hillerman is a, is a great man and a great teacher. And I learned a ton. I would run home every day and, and scribble in my notebook everything that I learned. And I, and I still have those notebooks and I still reference them every year. Um, Coach Hillerman moved on to North Central Missouri and uh, I got a teaching job and I realized that uh, in public school you get out a little bit earlier. Uh, so I still had a little time to coach. So I volunteered at Lindenwood in 2008. And then the next year I got on full time at Lindenwood. I was an admissions counselor and a coach. And I did that for two years. Um, and then a quirky thing happened um, when they moved from the NAI to the NCAA. Uh, we coaches who were in the admissions office had to get different jobs on campus. They didn't want us dealing with uh, admissions. Um, so I got moved to kind of an assistant athletic director position. And because of that, I couldn't coach anymore. So I was pretty disappointed about that. I did that for two years. Um, but then I decided I want to, of course, get back into coaching. So I went uh, and worked at the Sandlot baseball facility for the St. Louis Pirates oh, yeah. for three years. Really enjoyed that. Um, ran training classes and, and uh, summer and fall programs. Did that for about three years and then uh, met the right people. Uh, got an interview, got the job at MICDS. Did that for five years. And then uh, just about midsummer, um, when I when I thought that maybe the window of opportunity had closed for me to get back into college coaching one more time, Lennon Wood had an opening, and uh, Coach Butcher, Coach Pierman called me, and um, the people at MICDS were kind enough to to let me go with their blessing. So I'm really excited to be back. Um, it's kind of the job I always wanted, and uh, you know I go to work every day happy about what I get to do. So hold on. Just so you guys know, Tim is very modest about himself. <laughs> so you know how he skipped. I went to MICDS and won a state title the very first season that I was there. You can you can say it, admit it. You won a title the first year there, right? That's a yeah, heck yeah, that's I'd a huge say accomplishment, it. right? Congratulations! Yeah, I, I will let everybody know since Tim will not let everybody. There you know. go. I, I also had uh, seven college bound players that year. One who signed professionally, so we were we were pretty talented that year. Um, That's okay. You can inherit great, talent. Great. You still have to coach it, right? And, and I th- <laughs> asked Joe Torre. He point. inherited ca- talent, and look what he did. Exactly. Right? Exactly. Tim Canavan <laughs> is the Joe Torre of MICDS. <laughs> <laughs> you have to be able, and and you can speak to that. We can all sit here. You know, uh, talent. We, you have to have talent to win at any level. I don't care. So, but you have to have the right people in place to manage that talent, bring it to, bring it to its fullest potential, and and get all the kids working together. And that is the job of a of any coach or manager. So, congratulations, man. <laughs> Thank you, <laughs> uh, Tim. So, Lindenwood. Uh, let's talk about Lindenwood for a minute. Last year they were. 15 and one until mm-hmm. they had to stop playing. I think, what are they ranked in the, they're ranked what top five. In one poll, they were as high as number five. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, going into 21, kind of give us a, a frame of what Linda Woods baseball team looks like. The roster looks like, uh, the schedule looks like, um, and, and what you guys are projecting. Sure. So we're in the great lakes Valley conference, the GLVC, um, some of the area teams that folks might know, Maryville, uh, Umzel, McKendry. Um, and we return almost everybody. Um, I say we, even though I wasn't on staff last year. Um, we have a really deep, talented pitching staff, uh, both starters and, and bullpen. And I think that'll be the strength of the team. Um, we're pretty solid defensively up the middle where it matters. Catcher, middle infield, center field. Um, we have some real talent there. Um, and then we returned seven uh, position players that, that made up the bulk of the lineup every day. Um, so we're, we're just hoping the offense can, can do its part and keep up with the pitching. Uh, we have uh, high expectations for the year. We always have high expectations, but um, 
it's a pretty talented group and really excited about the season. Great. You guys got a lot of coming back. That, let me ask you, I mean, your first year coming into this, this like this, you know, as you said, we, you know, when mm -hmm. you're coming into this type of situation, what's your expectation for yourself as a coach? What are you, how are you trying to fit into that, uh, that situation? And what is your mindset going in as a coach? I think the first thing is, is to get to know the players, um, get to know their strengths and weaknesses and, and get to know them personally, try to establish a relationship. You know, if, if you don't have a relationship with the player, they're not really going to care what you have to say or what you think. Um, so that's the number one thing is to try to get to know them. Um, let them know that you're on their side. You want the best for them. Um, but then they also, you know, on a college staff, you're, you're given your particular assignments. So um, I, I'm going to co help coach Ringy, who's also uh, new on the staff with the offensive development of the players, executing the offense. And then I'm coaching catchers. So I'm trying to dive headlong into both of those um, and become an expert because I know that I'm, you know, I'm ultimately responsible for how the team performs in, in those areas. Um, so those two things, getting to know the players, uh, establishing a relationship, but then just making sure I, I um, is it, am as competent as possible on those, in those other two areas. They have to believe you, don't they? <laughs> they, they do. They do. <laughs> but I think that goes back to, you know, what we were talking about, you know, you walked into a situation, you had talent, uh, you're, you're kind of walking into this situation where you have talent and this kind of speaks to what I think something just in my estimation, just in this conversation, a strength of yours. You walked into M MICDS, you said you had talent, you had kids going, you're walking into a situation with talent, but it looks like you're well prepared to deal with those challenges to build those relationships. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, you get to spend a lot of time with the kids um, through the fall. That's one thing I love about college baseball is, you know, you're practicing for three months in the fall and, and of course the long the long spring season so you get to be out on the field a lot get to know them very well um the adjustment from from head coach to assistant coach um it really hasn't been difficult i, I think it's actually been helpful to have had head coach experience now that i'm that i'm an assistant coach um because as you say coming into a a, a new program what I'm trying to do is put myself in coach Bletcher's shoes and see what, what would I want my assistant coach to do, you know? And I, I have a lot of the same philosophies as, as he has. I took those with me wherever I went from the first time that I coached with him. So we're on the same page, um, generally. Um, but I, 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 uh, I just try to put myself in his shoes and say, what, what do I want? What would I want from my assistant coaches? Yeah. T Tim is a very, uh, prepared human being. <laughs> so, which I think he is a huge asset to Linwood because one, he knows what he's talking about too. He's always prepared when he goes in with that, Tim, give, give us a sample of what the day to day looks like for Linwood with practice, um, for, you know, for high school kids who maybe have a dream of playing at Linwood or have a dream of playing in college. Uh, what, what's a day like for a player and what's a day like for a coach? Sure. So this fall, it was obviously a little bit different. We had uh, certain protocols we had to follow. And for them, uh, for the most part, we practice in small groups. We can only practice in groups of 10. So rather than have the entire squad out there, we would break it into groups and run several practices throughout the day. So our, our days were pretty long as coaches. We would get into the office, um, check some emails, um, return some calls, sit down, and do our practice plan. And then we were on the field for about six or eight hours a day. Um, the players, they would practice uh, five days a week, um, anywhere from two to three hours, depending upon the, the time of year. You know, early in the fall, you can only do skill work for about four hours for a week uh, per week. Um, as you progress into it, you can actually ramp up to 15 hours per week. And then it curtails back down to four. Um, so they were on the field 
those amount of hours each week. And then they're also in the weight room two or three hours per week. So it probably wasn't um, as time consuming for them just be because of the, the, pro the COVID protocols. We couldn't all be on the field together as long. Um, but it's certainly, um, you know, you, you hear it's a job. Um, it, it takes a lot of uh, want to and discipline and, and time management to really be a dedicated student athlete. Yeah. Yeah. Morning, noon and night. That's, that's it. You know, one of the things, you know, and I, I know he will we'll talk a little bit about recruiting, but if you're recruiting, you're looking at with what you said there, you know, you're talking four hours a week, you ramp up to 15 and back down to four. So you have to have a student athlete that's willing then to take upon himself that measure of responsibility to continue that work. Correct. Absolutely. Absolutely. Especially this year, you know, um, the, everybody went home for the break and they're going to finish their classes online and we won't start practice till January 10th. So that's about what, six or seven weeks on their own yeah. where hopefully we've instilled in them, um, the, the drills and the things that they need to be working on. And, and they have the uh, desire to do that. Um, so if they don't, somebody will probably take their spot. Right. There's there's a lot of people that, are, that want that those spots. Um, so, yeah, you, you have to be very motivated and hardworking um, and, 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 ju and just want it. It's I always tell kids when you go to college, you have to understand this is their livelihood. This is what they yeah. do. Your performance helps them keep their job. So if you're not yeah. going to work, if you're not going to perform, they're going to find somebody else that will, which is back to it like being a job um now when you guys are getting into the recruiting aspect of things and you're looking for the right kids what does that entail besides yeah he's got to work hard but um you know what does that entail and 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 where are you doing a lot of your recruiting is it locally regionally nationally but I know things have changed with COVID because, you know, rosters are deeper. Um, there's more kids there now. Some people got to stay an extra year or did stay an extra year, got an extra year of eligibility. Um, but from a player's perspective, what where are you looking and what are you looking for? Obviously, talent. <laughs> talent is obvious, number one. You know, you got to be good. But, but, you know, as a coach, you know what you want. Sure. Uh, I think – I. When I was 16 or 17 or 18, probably one thing I didn't understand that it, there's probably just a, a base floor level of size, strength and speed that you need to be able to play at each level. Um, you know, if, if you're a right handed pitcher and you want to play division one baseball, you probably need to throw about 92 miles an hour at this point. You know, um, if, if you are uh, a shortstop and you want to play division two baseball, you probably need to run a, a, a sub 760 and you need to be able to throw it across the infield uh, mid 80. So there's a there's a baseline of of size, strength and speed that you need for each level. That's not to say that somebody with Division one measurables can't play at Division two. So there, there are great Division two programs there are great Division three programs. Um, but there's probably a floor there. Um, you know, the next thing we're, we're going to check on pretty early in the process is just what kind of person is this? You know, are they a good person? Um, are, are they a good teammate? Do they always play hard? Are they a responsible student? You know, um, we want to, uh, we want, we want good, good kids for lack of a, a better term in the program. They're, you know, no behavioral problems, no academic issues. Um, so we're going to, we're going to look at character, right? Um, we are going to look at, at measurables, foot speed, arm strength. Um, but when, when I go watch somebody play, um, there's probably a couple things I'm looking for. I want to see uh, how they warm up. You know, do they take it seriously? Are they just going through the motions. When they play catch, are they playing catch with a purpose? I know it sounds like a little thing and, and kids probably hear it all the time and they don't quite grasp it, but it really is true. Um, are you moving to the baseball with your feet? Um, are you throwing it on the line to hit your partner's chest? Um, you know, when you go through your, your, your dynamic warm up, are you, um, are you doing it with purpose? Um, 
I also want to see how they react when something goes wrong. You know, do, do they uh, get angry and, and kind of get off their game? Or are they able to take a deep breath, gather themselves and move on? You know, um, so how do they react what, to a bad call or something bad happening? Uh, what's their body language like? You know, I heard one time that when you walk up to a field, you shouldn't be able to tell whether a guy is up 10 or down 10. You know, his, his body language is the same because baseball to me is not an emotional game. You know, you need to say stay at the same emotional pitch the whole time and, and just play pitch by pitch. Um, and I want to see, uh, like, like I'm, I'm repeating myself here, but just how hard do you play? Do you sprint to first base regardless of what happens in the at bat? You know, do you run on and off the field? Do you play with an enthusiasm? Um, are you are you a team guy? Will you hit a ball to the right side? Will you get a bunt down? Now, not all games and, and require that that little stuff, but I want to know that that you play hard and you're a team guy as well. So when you're on the recruiting trail, let's say, and you're watching kids play uh, high school ball, you're you're taking notes, and how many of these kids actually know you're in the stands? Um, I don't know. I don't know. I um, if I'm if I'm really doing my job, I'm not there to to kind of socialize or fraternize. Um, I'm, I'm just in my own little world and, and watching everything that I can and taking it all in. You know, if I have a Lindenwood something on and I've got a gun or a stopwatch, they, they probably realize it. Um, right. but that's a, that's a good question. I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Because I always, I always thought that, uh, you know, you never know who's watching. Right. Mm -hmm. And you, you know, you, <laughs> my first experience I saw, um, with a real large scope, uh, my son was playing high school ball and we went to, uh, a tournament game and, oh, I'm trying to remember the young man that was pitching that day. I can't remember his name. Matt Veerling at CBC. Mm -hmm. And I'm, st the place was packed and I'm standing next to the stands. And on the first pitch, there was like, 15 guns <laughs> that raised up at once. <laughs> yeah. and it was just so, you know, all the kids knew that was a, it was a situation like that, you know, um, how am I going to play? How am I, the expectation is there, right? Mm -hmm. But is that the same way you play every day? And I think that's a, that's a great point because you never know who's in the stands watching that particular moment. And, that, and that's a great point if I can jump in because a lot of recruiting, people might not realize this, is just done by word of mouth. You know, coaches don't just show up to events and discover players or calling ahead and talking to people and talking to coaches. And I'm going to be on my on the phone with my buddies and, hey, hey you need to go check this kid out. He plays for such and such. Um, so even if there's not a coach there, there might be somebody that – that knows the coach of the, the program that you're interested in. Um, so back to your point, you never know who's watching. And um, it's always important to put your best foot forward because uh, you just don't know who might be able to, to help you out, who you can impress. Yeah, and I'm glad you hit that point because things have changed drastically, in, I would say, last 10 years on just recruiting in general because there's you know so many opportunities for kids with – softwares to get their name out there right. to email coaches um you know which and then when a coach shows up you can actually see okay these 10 kids have contacted me and these four i actually like their videos and i like their act scores or gpas because the first question coach always asks once they like a kid how are his grades <laughs> uh, you can't get them eligible what's the point of having them there right so um but with all of the, the stuff that's out there, um, how much of that do you really pay attention to? You know, the, the perfect game rankings, prep baseball report rankings. Um, do you guys follow any of those? Yeah, well, I, I get on there quite frequently. Just uh, as I'm learning the landscape of, of uh, high school baseball, you know, for five years I was only focused on, on my team, my program, so I kind of lost track of – um, who was who in the area. 
but now it's, it's a quick reference. You know, I, to me, the rankings are a little subjective. I am, I'm sure the gentlemen that do those have a very good idea, but I'm, you know, if you put 10 coaches in the room, they're going to have 10 different opinions on the, on the rankings, but it's a good quick reference as to uh, who the players are in the area. And the most helpful thing actually are, are the videos. Um, if, if we get a message from somebody or an email from somebody, I can quickly Google their name and find a three minute video and I'll have a pretty good idea if, if I'm interested or not. Tell me so, what, what, when you're looking at the video, you know, I mean, like you said, a three minute video. So, you know, that's not a lot. It really isn't. So what mm -hmm. particular things are you looking for in that video that say, yeah, I'm interested in that kid. I think you're more looking for something that might cross them off rather than um, confirm that you want them, right? Okay. So if you're looking at a swing, you want a swing that you think will play against high velocity with a good, you know, and, and, a, and a breaking ball, you know, um, a, a short, tight hack, we say in the program all the time, um, that, that can compete against uh, elite pitching, right? Um and then you, you, you know, you look at the feet of a defender or the arm strength and a exchange of a catcher, um, measurables again, you know, what's their 60 time, what's a pitcher, um, is, is, is a velo off the mound. Of course, then you got to see them live and see if they can, can throw strikes and, and spin it. Um, but, but I, I think if you're just doing a quick reference, you're just looking for something that might cross them off. I'm going I'm to break ranks here because, man, I got to say this because, you know, when you said <laughs> tight, quick hack, right, you know, you're watching Major League Baseball and you're like, you're screaming at the guy with an 0-2 count just to shorten up. <laughs> <laughs> and they're swinging for the fences still. Uh, so, you know, baseball and, and, and how much has that affected the kids and what you see in swings today? Well, I think it goes back to it's it's a bit of a different game, right? All those yeah. guys are so big and strong. I mean, they don't really bunt anymore. They don't really steal bases anymore. Um, it's a it's a power game on the mound and at the plate, right? And the, the college game and the high school game are not the same way. Um, so if you can if you can establish a, a relationship with your players and earn their trust and get their buy in, you can explain to them the benefits of shorten it up and, and putting the ball in play. You know, I'm uh, to say that to all, all outs are equal is, is a, is a fallacy to me. A strikeout is much different than a hard ground ball that, that the shortstop may or may, may not make the play on that, that keeps pressure on the defense. Well, that too, but if you look at the last couple of years and Tim's a stat guy, the teams that made the world series, are 99% of the time the two teams with the least amount of strikeouts during the regular season. Now, they may be hitting the ball 500 feet, but they're also putting the ball in play in the most. Play. Very good. So, yeah. So there still is that stat right there. There still is that thought process of getting the ball in play. Absolutely. Absolutely. We have our, you know, approach with less than two strikes and our approach with two strikes. And, yeah. You know, we expect uh, buy-in and execution of those. So for those that don't know, uh, Lindenwood, for one, has top-notch facilities. Uh, I think the field's gorgeous. Um, I think, yeah. what, like, was it eight, nine years ago they turfed it? I don't yeah. know how long ago was it, Tim. You might know more than, more than I uh, know. It was probably about nine years ago. Nine years yeah. ago. Um, I think they do a really good job recruiting at the local level. Um, I personally have no idea how much they recruit how much you guys recruit regionally or nationally. I didn't answer your question earlier about that. I'm sorry. You want me to go into that? I'm just, yeah, I'm just curious. Cause I, I will say this the last two or three years, Lindenwood regionally, uh, I mean, locally, I'm sorry, locally, they've done a really, really good job of going after top notch kids around the, their, you know, radius, their 90 mile radius of the school. Yeah. Um, but yeah, talk about, you know, outside of the local stuff, you know, regionally, nationally, you know, where you guys go and what you do and <clears throat> how you get those kids. Sure. I, you know, we think it's very important to uh, try to get the best players from the area and, and try to keep them at home. You know, so St. Charles is a, is a wonderful talent base for baseball. 
Um, that's why it's great to coach at Lindenwood, um, all these great schools around us. Um, so we want to control that area first. And then um, building upon some things we were talking about earlier, you know, you you recruit out of area with coaches that you know and that you have an established relationship with, you know, whose opinion you trust. So um, if there's a, a program in Chicago or a program in Milwaukee that we have a relationship with, we've gotten some players from, we know that they have similar philosophies and they coach the same way, you know, we'll touch base with them every year. Or if uh, somebody has a connection and, and Cal Coach Busher's from California, so he might have a connection there. Um, so it, it's it's primarily locally, but then you touch base with the people um, that you, you have connections with and, and that you uh, trust their opinion. That goes to what you talked about starting this relationships, right? If you're building those relationships with the player, if you've learned how to build the relationships first with the coaches and the people, um, there's a trust factor then as you begin that relationship because, you know, you've went to that coach, this is a kid, hey, I know this guy, he's a good guy, pay attention to what he's saying. So you automatically have some, let's, you know, some currency there to deal with, correct? Absolutely, absolutely. And, and I think that's why it's, it's so important for, for high school players to understand that the first people that they need to impress are their high school coach and their club ball coach, because those are the ones who are going to be referring them to the next level. Relationships. Yeah. Story of life. Don't. Yeah. And, and I think, uh, you know, we're going to get you out of here real quick, Tim, but I want to, I want to ask you about this point because I think this is something that me, myself and I, and, and, you know, uh, Matt here sitting next to me, we've, we've, no, geez, now for about three years, right? Talking baseball, maybe a little bit long. And here he's sitting next to me and we, we started on this uh, trek talking about baseball. So it is about the relationship uh, and talking to people and getting to know people. And that transcends into life after baseball. Yes. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. The, the relationships you make, um, the relationship I've made in baseball are, have been lifelong. You know, the guys that I grew up uh, playing baseball with, I, I still still talk to the guys that I played high school sports with are, are still my best friends. Uh, heck, my little league baseball coach still comes to many of the games that I coach. Um, you know, it's that that's what makes sports so special is, uh, is the relationships you build. And, you know, I think the most special thing about winning that state championship for me, I mean, I was so happy for the players. Um, but for me, it was uh, with each passing round, I saw more of my friends and family in the stands and I got to share that with them. Um, and that we have a, a, a picture of in at uh, TR Hughes and the state championship game. And there's just several rows of my friends and family and, yeah, that, that's what made it the most special for me. That's awesome. That's awesome. I love that. See, to me, that that makes it real. That's that's the personal thing. It is sport. It's fun. We all compete. But those are the moments, I think, that are real. So, hey, Tim, we want to thank you for joining us. And uh, we want to make sure we invite you back. Come on back and talk to us if you've got time. I know the season will ramp up, but we'd love to hear from you. Anytime, anytime you need, uh, anytime you need anything, just contact me. I'm happy to jump on the call and, and give you my thoughts. I appreciate it. I had a good time. Outstanding. Thanks, Tim. Appreciate it. Everybody right, take care guys. Thank you. Thank you. We want to thank, uh, Tim Canavan for, uh, coming on the show. Great guest, right? Always knowledgeable. Always, always. So guys, Hey, we appreciate you joining us. We're looking forward to some more. Uh, we'll, we'll be back in a couple weeks. After Thanksgiving, we're going to be talking. Uh, we've got guests Eric Goff uh, from Fort Zumwalt West. We got uh, Kevin Molder coming up from uh, Prep Baseball Report. Um, he's the Missouri Missouri director. Yeah. There you go. So hit that subscribe button. Hit that subscribe button. Hit the dinger. That's the bell. Hit the dinger for your notifications of uh, all shows coming up. We've got some more stuff coming up on our Youth Baseball Midwest Report. So we appreciate you uh, supporting 
uh, the show, and, and we hope you're enjoying. So remember, all you pitchers, keep throwing strikes. You hitters, keep hitting them where they ain't, and we'll see you next time. 